Honourable, thank you very much. Please, you may be seated. Okay. This gentleman has a very sweet voice. <laughs> it sounds like it is endowed greatly with emeralds. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the chairperson, delegates present, members of the press, distinguished uh, uh, experts on the field of emeralds and assessment, let me also recognize the presence of uh, Chief Lumpuma here present. Let me simply say, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I don't want, I didn't want to say, let me simply say, all protocol observed after going through the protocol. <laughs> well, it is my honor uh, and indeed great honor to officiate at this first ever Emirates Summit to be held in Zambia. Ladies and gentlemen, allow me to commend the organizers for taking this great initiative. I want to state very clearly that government recognizes the importance of gemstone subsector and the role it plays in our economic development and in the mining sector generally. Further, gemstone, or emeralds in particular, are one of the major mineral commodities mined in Zambia. And as a government, we have issued several mining licenses to several players in the industry. And we are saddened that among the several licenses in excess of over 400 that we have issued, we have very few mining houses operating in this sector. Many of these license orders have had huge challenges ranging from production, processing, and marketing. Most of our small-scale miners in this field have been thriving with difficulties, especially as regards to finance, issues as regards to uh, capital investment, equipment, and many other factors. My government is committed to ensure that this sector is uh, helped in order to ensure that it contributes significantly to the economy of our country. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Chairman, I am happy that Kajam is already setting the pace and that this is evident in their holding of the local auction which was held a couple of weeks ago. I'm very confident that those of you that deal in emeralds know very well and too well that the last auction that we, we held involved uh, uh, low quality stones, so to say, and that we move forward to begin to ensure that we bring to Zambia equally auctions of high quality stones going forward. Ladies and gentlemen, my government is determined to ensure that as we continue to attract foreign direct investment, as we continue to attract different players, especially investors in the gemstone sector and beyond, my government will ensure that at all times we put in mechanisms that are going to ensure we have a win-win situation. We know that investors are here to make a profit on their return and that my government will support such initiatives but you must be aware that my government is not going to attract foreign direct investment at the expense of our people and the benefit to the people of zambia we would like to ensure that we have a win-win situation where the investor is happy the people are happy the government is happy I think that this is the cornerstone of my government's commitment. Ladies and gentlemen, Your Royal Highness, it saddens my government to note 
that host communities in which these minerals are exploited continue to live in abject poverty. This, I must state very categorically, that my government will put a serious reverse and ensure that the minerals that are domiciled in the Republic of Zambia are beneficial to our people. Let me state that we would like to see serious involvement of mining houses in terms of infrastructure development in our community, such as roads, health, and education. For us, we believe that the largest equity contribution that we put on the table to our partners, the investors, are our mineral resources that are endowed naturally by God on our republic. Let me state that government owns a stake in Kajam. And for this reason, we are proud that Kajam is taking a lead in ensuring that stakeholders across the industry are brought to ensure that we discuss issues pertaining to uh, the production, processing, and marketing of the emeralds. I want to urge this summit to discuss all matters related to uh, these mineral resources freely. I want you to ensure that you dissect the subject uninterrupted and that we get to a point where we come to a table ensuring that not only will the benefit accrue to the investors but also to the people of Zambia. You must be sure that my government will continue to put intervention measures to ensure there is flow of investment and at the same time rewarding the investor fairly and equitably while not disadvantaging Zambians. In conclusion, ladies and gentlemen, my government is committed to ensure that our players in the industry are helped by putting, uh, putting up infrastructure, especially as regards equipment, finance, and logistical operations in order to ensure that small players in inverted commas are helped. It is common knowledge that there are a lot of illegal trading of emeralds. Someone who is very technical always calls it secondary trading. I don't want to say secondary trading. I said illegal trading. <laughs> now, when illegality thrives, there are several people that don't get the benefit. First of all, the government loses huge tens of resources from the illegal trading of emeralds. Everybody focuses their attention on legal entities that are doing everything in order to grow their production. They are paying the workforce, they are running the mine, and yet illegal dealers go scot-free. Let me sound the warning. My government is determined to clean up the emerald sector. And we want to use, we want to use ASMEC. We want to use ASMEC to ensure that it coordinates with all the players, especially as, uh, ESMAS, ESMAS. You know, we have a lot of uh, institutions in the mining sector. ESMAS. <laughs> we want to use ESMAS and I discussed tentatively with their general secretary. I'm sure they must have passed on the message to the chairman and the team. You see, for a long time, there are some developed nations that failed to collect taxes from some of our colleagues that were evading taxes. Fortunately, they sat down and said, how best can we collect taxes from people that have been evading tax? 
Then they said, what we need to do is we need to get auditors from the countries of origin for these people that have been collecting, evading tax. <laughs> they went and employed those people from their country to collect their tax. The first month, they recorded a win. It's an European country. <laughs> That is why for us as a government, we believe that ESMAS, ESMAS as, a, as, as a, a capacity to ensure that it mobilizes its members and ensure that they contribute meaningfully instead of being on the fence. We believe, Mr. Chairman, that uh, we also have a duty as a government to look at our licensing procedures, including uh, uh, export permits that we give for these commodities. It is now clear that we have several people who do not have a mining license or an operating mine and yet they have huge access to emeralds. <laughs> you are quiet. I have no apologies. <laughs> We have a lot of people who have mining li who have export licenses and yet they have no mine. Mm -hmm. Where they are operating. If you go at their mine, they are there the last 10, 15, 20 years. This is unfair practice. Because the people operating the mine, where you are buying illegal or stolen stones, are putting capital investment in terms of equipment, finance, and logistical operations. We are seriously looking at means to ensure that people who do not have uh, a, a mining, a mine, an operating mine anyway, and they have access to uh, the stone, they should tell us where they got them. <laughs> and uh, in any case, we will be thinking of giving a license to the association so that anyone who has a mine, who doesn't have a mine and they have a stone, they should export through the association. And we are able to get the association accountable anyway. It is simple. If you have stones, you go to the association, they will not ask you where you have got them from because we know where you get them from. You go to the association, these are my uh, these are my quantities they tell you the lead period is 30 days or 45 days i have to ask sean about that okay this is how much you owe you that how much we owe you afterwards they will give you the money and that's government will be able to take get tax from you for people who have a mine an operating mine they can have they are they should be able to continue exporting like the way they have been anyway because they have a mine where we are able to see where this is coming from this is very unpopular. Unfortunately, I have no apology. <laughs> you know, when people are involved in certain things that benefit them, they speak the loudest. That's why you have heard the loudest talk about subsidies, because the biggest beneficiaries are the ones speaking loudest. <laughs> Let me quickly end, Mr. Chairman, by congratulating Kajam once more. And as the uh, a shareholder ourselves as government in Kajam, we are extremely delighted for this undertaking and would like other players in the business such as Grizzly to take this initiative so that we are moving on the same platform with our people. At the same time, I want to urge Kajam, Grizzly and other big players to ensure that you work very closely with the association and ensure that we clean up the system and move forward. This is the only association which houses one of the world's highest grade in terms of minerals and yet you don't have a specific office where we can find you. If we are looking for you, we start looking around everywhere and we don't see you. I think that you must take an initiative and create a, a deliberate policy to ensure that this association is strengthened and that it should be able to cater for the interest of its members in terms of equipment, logistic operations, and so on. I think if you are well organized 
you should be among the associations that should be able to thrive properly. And I am confident that Kajam, under the chairmanship of State Council, William Unirenda, and other stakeholders such as Grizzly, should be able to give you the support. And my ministry remains open to ensure that you are supported. Ladies and gentlemen, let me take this opportunity to urge the mining industry across the Republic of Zambia to continue thriving. I want to state that my government continues to attract foreign direct investment. At the time of privatization, we reached a point where we did not have resources and capacity to run and manage our mines effectively. We believed in a principle that somewhere, somehow, there was a big brother that could bring money, that could bring equipment, and they would keep our people in their jobs. That's why we were obliged to privatize, because we were given to understand that this big brother will continue to employ our people, will continue to inject capital in the operation. And in line with the Mines and Minerals Act for avoidance of doubt, the Ministry of Mines, Energy and Water Development, through the Act, is empowered to grant mining license, licenses in the entire Republic of Zambia. You will note that we don't give license, licenses without conditions. All the licenses that we have issued have conditions, including the licenses for Kajam, Grizzly, licenses for anyone, including KCM. And among many obligations that these licenses, uh, conditions for these licenses states that, number one, the license holder shall employ and train local Zambians. If you are going to declare 2,000 people redundant, it means you are abrogating the mines, the mineral act, and that you are against the spirit of the license in which we have issued you. You don't expect the Minister of Mines to stand aloof. We will move in and ensure that the law is not destroyed. In short, the law is there for everybody. The law is there to support the investor, to ensure that they get a fair return, the law is also there to protect our nationals. The law is also there to protect the Zambians. I want to state that if people willingly or decide to forget the provisions and conditions of their license, we have a duty as a ministry to remind them that you have an obligation by the act to ensure that you safeguard our Zambian national. When we gave out the mines through privatization, we were assured we are bringing in people who have technical and financial capacity, which we didn't have. In fact, we had technical experts. What we didn't have was the financial capacity. To date, Mr. Chairman, we have a group of highly talented and skilled Zambian mining gurus across the world. Most of them have been frustrated locally because their jobs have been uh, undertaken by pseudo expatriates. <laughs> their jobs has been taken by some of the most highly incompetent and qualified people and yet they have been paid as expatriates. The law stipulates very clearly that expatriates will only be people whose skills are not legally attainable or available in the Republic of Zambia. Ladies and gentlemen, my government has no apology to give to insist that Zambians not only deserve better, they deserve the best. We are committed to the ideals, 
of running and managing the mining industry on a professional basis. We are committed to ensuring that all the stakeholders get the benefit from their returns. We are not naive to the issues that surround the mining operations. This also goes to Kajam, Grizzly, and many other stakeholders. Mining operation is cyclic in nature. The price is never static. It is always up and about. And any mining company that can choose to plan its operation costs on the highest price of the metal certainly is a mining operation without a vision. You plan the operation of your mine at the lowest price of the metal. So that if you hit over the metal price, you are able to make a grade. That's why if you have, uh, anyway, those arguments where you tell me, no, we are pruning the people because uh, it has moved from nine to seven. It's very rational. <laughs> when it was at nine, did you employ 2,000? <laughs> When it was at nine, did you employ 2,000? I think that for once, Zambians deserve to be taken seriously. These issues where people were compromised and blindly they agreed to anything, I think that will not work from this government. We would like to be part to a progressive regime that accounts for its actions. Mr. Chairman, I have dwelt very heavily on the scope of other issues relating to the industry because I know that it also affects the gemstone industry and beyond. I want to encourage all the participants here present to participate fully and ensure that where you need to, to criticize the measures that government has put in place please feel free to do so because it's from such measures that we are able to strike a balance and create a, a situation where the industry survives i think that if we are open and transparent we'll get the best from the industry so we will not be lopsided as government we are open to debate we are open to advice we are open to interventions that are going to create parity in the industry. Ladies and gentlemen, let me take this opportunity now to officially open the summit. And I wish you well and God's blessings and a wonderful deliberation. Thank you very much.